Hi friends! Uh, welcome to Always Yarn First, my channel here on YouTube. I am Lindsay and I am coming to you today with a very special um, video. I was in Iowa uh, over a week ago and I grew up there and there is a very special place. I have teased about it. And today I will be sharing some videos, photos, and an interview um, with Julie Delaney. She is the co-owner, her and her husband, of Irish Meadows. Uh, here's her card. Yarn Barn and Boutique. Uh, so I got to interview Julie. Uh, she did not want to be on camera, so I will be placing her... Uh, interview over top of uh, the footage my daughter took while we were at the alpaca farm. Uh, you'll see all the animals out. It was a gorgeous day. Um, it was beautiful. And we saw a new baby alpaca that was not even 24 hours old. And then you'll also see footage um, inside of her barn that is a shop with all kinds of accessory, alpaca themed things, including yarn from her alpacas there. So I hope that you enjoy this video. Um, please give it a like. Please also subscribe to my channel. Hopefully there will be more content like this in the future. Um, thanks for stopping by and I hope you enjoy. All right. Okay. So I'm here with Julie and Julie, you're from near my hometown here in Iowa. So tell us, um, what about your farm, your business, and how you got it started? Yeah, that's interesting because how we got started was um, we had moved to this farm and we had all these barn buildings and they were all empty. And being so close to the house, we, first of all, we thought it was very sad that they were empty mm -hmm. because we love old buildings and we hate when people tear them down. And so it just felt sad to us that um, the previous owners had maintained this farm and kept it up. And, um, and then all of a sudden, then they passed away and now the buildings were going to be torn down or whatever. So we, we felt they needed a purpose. It was too nice of a farm to not have a purpose. And um, I was, we were visiting my sister in Parker, Colorado, and I picked up a Country Living magazine. And um, thumbing through that, and there was an ad in the back of the Country Living magazine showing three alpaca heads. I had never seen an alpaca before. Had no idea what it was. Wow. This was now 20 years ago. And um, my brother-in-law is a UPS driver and spoke up and said, yeah, there's a couple farms out on the outskirts of Parker. He said, those are alpacas, and but they're very expensive. Well, at that point in time, we had little to no money of our own, and um, but I was intrigued, more than intrigued, and I just would not let the the idea rest. And so I we thought about it constantly for four years. I did most of all. Um, by the time four years passed, we had a little spare money, and so we bought our first ones. Wow! And by the year's end, we had twenty. <laughs> and uh, jumped in with both feet, and that's been 17 years ago. Wow. Yeah. So, are you a knitter or a crocheter? I am not. You are not? No. Okay. No, but I, I've i always loved fabric. Um, I, I'm a fabricolic, whatever it's called, fabriholic. <laughs> Someone who has stashes and stashes of fabric. Okay. Yeah. But now I can say I truly like yarn as well as fabric. Mm -hmm. But the problem is I just feel like, I always feel pressured being a small business owner. So we have the animal side of the business and the mm -hmm. show side and the um, shop side. And I, I feel like I have very little spare time. So to, I feel like I'm wasting time if I sit down and, and would try to teach myself. Right. Gotcha. So I would love to know how to knit or crochet. Crochet, I do know basics, but knitting, I don't. And I would love to, but I feel like I... You have a lot on your plate. I do. Yeah. <laughs> I do. But I would love to know how. So talk a little bit about the show side. I'm not really familiar with that side. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we probably go to 12, 13 shows a year. Um, we'll travel all over the United States if we have to. We don't usually like going west over the mountains, but we'll go to Denver as far as Denver. 
Um, De Des Moines, believe it or not, has uh, four shows under one roof. So they do four separate shows in one weekend. So your animal you can show four times and get four different ribbons. And why that's important is because then you have one gas expense, one hotel expense, one pen fee expense, but you get to show that animal four times versus one time at a normal show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, why showing is important is it puts a lot of value on the animals. Mm -hmm. um, if you have animals that do really good in the shows, then they're worth a lot of money. Yeah. So you don't know what you have until you take it to shows. We do because we're experienced breeders. But for the normal person, if they want to get decent money for their animals, they have to show them and earn that money, you know, uh, in ribbons. Yeah. You don't get paid anything for showing. You just get paid through the enhanced value of your animal. Last time I visited, too, I think we talked about this just a little bit. And you talked about that you had the top alpaca yeah we cook. have lot, lots of top alpacas this year for example um we did the best of any farm in the country at the national show wow we were number one um and just yesterday found out that the first for the first time ever the show system kept track of i mean they always keep track of who wins but they actually did a contest for who wins the most male alpaca and female alpaca for um the fall show fall season 2021 and spring season 2022 they added those two seasons together and so the the national organization listed the top 10 males in the entire u.s and the top 10 females in the entire u.s and out of the whole united states we had three of the top 10 males and two of the top 10 females amazing yeah <laughs> and how many packas, alpacas do you have now um of our own, we have about 90, but that includes wow. uh, males and females. That's amazing. Yeah. So when did the store part of your business come about? Yes, I at first was over in the little building across the way. That's what I was in first um, for three seasons, and then I moved over here. So the building across the way is a bank barn. It's um, a barn from 1860 built into the bank, into the ground. Wow. And I quickly outgrew that. Yeah. This has more square footage by far over here. And this was the original granary of the farm. And so um, we then remodeled this or turned it into, uh, because of course it was a working granary, so it was not insulated, not anything. So mm -hmm. basically like building a brand new building, but yet we left all the original character and everything in it. So um, I just had my um, ninth anniversary in this building. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Thank you. So now looking back from when you first read your Country Living magazine to now, what would you say is your favorite part? Yes. Um, you know, it... <laughs> We make our mo <clears throat> most of our money we make from show animals. So going to shows is something that if we ever get out of the business, I will absolutely miss. But with that being said, of course, birthing the animals and when you get special yeah. ones, it's so very exciting. We just had a very special one yesterday. So that's really exciting. I would miss that. I would miss the shows. But I also like the personal satisfaction of getting yarn made for my own animals. Nothing can beat opening a box of yarn from the mini mill and just the anticipation of what's going to be like. Yes. And and I have bought your yarn from your alpacas before and made things from it. So it is very special. Thank yarn, you. So. Thank you. So that's very exciting. So the show system, um, having these prize winning animals and having those animals do really well. And then making the finished product. Those would be my top three things that I yeah. would very much miss if we were out. Well, I just, I mean, I've told you this before our interview, but as someone who grew up here and there wasn't much here when I grew up, so as now a knitter and crocheter, it is such a special place to come visit. So. Oh, thank you. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you for being interviewed. Yes, thank you.